How's it going, guys? What we have here is what I like to call the Pinstriper Interview Series. Uh, a while back, a lot of guys were asking me to make DVDs on how to pinstripe, and I thought it might be better to actually interview guys that I know that make a living at it and have been for a lot of years. Me, I, I'm just a guy that goofs around in this garage. I paint my silly little rat things and monsters, and uh, I pinstripe some stuff, and I earn some extra cash from my projects that way. But these guys actually feed themselves, they pay their rent, and they go to the movies and out to dinner with their old ladies with this money. So uh, I thought it might be better to ask them. You guys had asked me all different questions and stuff that I should ask them. I came up with 20 different uh, questions. I asked them those questions, and I have four guys that I've interviewed. You'll meet them all here on YouTube. So um, let's get right into it. Uh, here you are. These are the Pinstriper Interview Series. Enjoy it. I'm still on Long Island. And I'm at my friend Alex's place, who I like to call his name. Uh, his trade name is Alex in Wonderland, who I like to call the crazy airplane guy. And if you look over my shoulders, you can see why. This is an actual suburban neighborhood with a Republic uh, jet fighter in his yard. So, uh, because of all of Alex's eclectic stuff, I'm going to give you a quick little visual whip around of the yard. So you guys can see, it's not just pinstriping. There's like goofy monsters and pinup girls and you know three-dimensional art. And Alex is a real aviation nut, so ob obviously a lot of his stuff is aircraft. So I'll just give you a, a quick walk around, and then the, we'll look in his garage. We'll see some of that stuff in there, and then we'll get down to the brass tacks of uh, Alex in Wonderland. He's been pinstriping the Long Island for a long time. There was actually an Ed Big Daddy Roth video of Alex and uh, Ed Big Daddy Roth, who obviously has since passed, and a fellow from Queens named Vic Kessler, uh, and he's passed away too, so Alex is, a, is a, an, Amer an American foundation and icon, so we'll be right back. Let me set the camera up, and I'll show you some of the stuff in his yard. All right, everybody, I'm obviously not a professional cameraman, so uh, this is going to be, you're going to see my shadow and everything in here, but my extension cord for my camera is only so long, so... These are some of the model airplanes. I mean, Alex was just telling me, this guy in the back over here, he saved that out of a house that was built in the uh, late 20s, early 30s. And uh, he, yeah, that's the way it was. And he painted the little uh, the ho uh, Pegasus horse on the front and everything and did all that artwork. And there's this cool little uh, North American Mustang that's telling you which way the wind is blowing. That's pretty neat, too. He does all the paintwork on these. And I can only get up so close with my extension cord, but he's got... On the side of this one, he's got Krusty the Clown. Let me get out of, out of my face out of that there. Here you go, the shadow, rather. You can see he did all the lettering and Krusty the Clown, and got the uh, Pepsi Cola, Pepsi drink written on the top wing of that bad boy. There's stuff everywhere. And Alex, it went, well, at one time, this had this cool pinup girl right here, and just being out in the weather and stuff, old lady luck hasn't been so lucky. So, uh, that's pretty neat. And he also did the lettering up here on this, where it says Lockheed. I thought it was a Republic. I don't know much about the aircraft junk, but he did all that lettering. This is actually, you know, pinstriping and stuff's a great field to be in. He's got this rat think he's doing on a piece of wood cutout. And, uh, over here in the fence, he's got an old, uh, Pepsi sign thing and that flying lady. That was the side of a Chevy station wagon Alex used to drive around every day. That's pretty cool, man. Art is, is everywhere. And I got to try and uh, maybe I'll make it inside the shed with Superman and Marilyn later on when the battery charges. But he's got, you can see, it looks like there's a, uh, looks like an Electra behind Marilyn. And he's got that goofy bomb up there. And he's got, the, here's his sign, pinstriping by an art by Alex in Wonderland. Now let's come on. Do around more of the yard. I mean, it's kind of glary out here for me, so it's hard to see my camera viewer, but there's a Memphis Bell girl, some half of a 
fiberglass 59 Cadillac looking kind of thing and Tokyo Rose there and he's got some bumper art he got from a fellow I believe is named Oscar Pumpkin a while ago of that horse and there's just airplane stuff everywhere and this is cool this wing here I'll get back on that and that's the other side of his station wagon on the bottom there and uh, we'll come around this part of the yard looks like a, a GB wing and that big, whoop, that big bomb over there, that thing, I painted that a long time ago for him. And the little cutouts of the garage door, and there's a flying model of a DC-3 he's going to fix up. And this stuff over here, and this stuff on his back porch. And even on the roof of the back porch, I can get in there to show you. It's upside down, so turn your TVs around, you'll see that right side up. And that's a 57 Chevy, and there you go, you got more... Uh, pinstriping by Alex and that's the kind of pinstriping Alex does those big fans of color I'll show you that down so I don't know if we're gonna see anything like that from Alex because that's pretty advanced and time-consuming and uh, well for all you guys up there in Chicago that's Scarface Al Capote he looks kind of pale these days and it's a, a Buick LeSabre wagon I cut the front off of that and painted it for Alex because it just looks cool look at it When's the last time you saw a big-ass chrome bumper on a car? There's just it's, there's too much stuff to show you guys, actually. It's another a weather vane. It's an old seaplane. And a nice wood American Eagle. The chairs. Let's, let's move in on these chairs. And this is more of Alex's uh, pinstriping work right there. Yeah, it's pretty intense, man. On that chair. And he's got this like, little joker guy here on the backrest. And... This other chair has got a flower he did, and this is just, you know, way outside the box of uh, pinstriping. But, and th this is pretty cool. That's one of Coop's, Chris Cooper's uh, Devil Girls with the mag wheel there. And, you know, and the flames and stuff, I'm sure maybe Alex had a body shop doing, but he did all the pinstriping and outlining. So, uh, alrighty, so you can see all that crazy stuff Alex has got painted. You know, and you know, other people have helped out. I've done, like I said, that front half of the Buick. I cut it off the car, I welded it together, and I painted it and all that form. And, and that's his piece of art. You know, there's, there's art everywhere. You don't even realize it sometimes. Every time, it's like one of the things Alex told me a long time ago is, you know, you build, you get these cool old model kits of like the USS Missouri, and uh, it's it's not the actual model, but a painting, and it's ah, oh, you know, all the, the guns are going off, and there's waves and stuff like that, and you build the model and you throw the box away. But well, that original painting was like probably, you know, this giant, like, I don't know, a 10 by 20 foot thing that they took a photo of for the, for the model box. And, and you just take that art and throw it away. And I never really appreciated it until he pointed that out to me. So, but that's all the artwork he does, those fans of color. And, and that's his style. I'm sure when he started out, you know, he was doing completely different stuff. And now, you know, he's got his own style and stuff that has derived from people that influenced him or different artists and stuff so we're gonna meet Alex now uh, actually you know what I'll give you a quick walkthrough in the gar I'll give you a quick walkthrough in the garage later that's too much too much to take in at once because the garage is way more intense than the yard here if you thought the yard was intense you're in for some pure Bolivian crack cocaine uh, yeah so we're gonna meet Alex and ask him the 20 questions and get to work <laughs> Okay guys, uh, I'm holding my camera with my other hand like I'm taking a selfie because it's a one car garage, it's very tight and you can see behind me over my shoulders that there's lots of stuff in here, okay? Like even a, a 57 Chevy. So I'm going to turn the camera around and I'll give you a quick look at all of the aviation stuff and some of the things Alex has painted and it's just intense. This, this is place is a museum in its own right. So let me whip the camera around. All right, it may be a little dark in here and stuff, but uh, I'll show you the car quick. He's got this 57 Chevy convertible that he bought in 1969. It's unrestored other than the $12 Earl Scheid paint job on it. And uh, a lot of this is like, even like right here, there's this Stearman airplane and uh, just on the wall, this was a... Uh, like a uh, picnic table top with the pole through the middle for the umbrella. You know, for your backyard, he had that welded up. They did the bodywork and he put a rat think on it. 
I'll try and get in here. It's very, I can say it's a, it's a one car garage, so it's tight to really see all this stuff. It's just, it's intense. This is up in the rafters, and this is a big Maryland. I think he had one of his friends do that for him. And there's just airplane stuff and neat stuff everywhere. He just loves his model airplanes. I'll do the ceiling later. And he's got this uh, Voigt Corsair on top of the Chevy. And uh, let's move down here a little bit toward the back of the garage. There's an old Fokker uh, F1, F-190 uh, Fokker. I think my uncle flew one of those during World War II. And uh, that's supposed to be a picture of Alex on his chopper when he was a kid in, in the 70s. And I'll show you, that's the chopper right there. We'll come around and see it. But this, this crazy stuff everywhere, gang. And it's like, like I say, it's all aviation stuff. Here's Alex's old pan head. And that's a real time capsule, you know. Uh, just intense. And he's got this big bay window. And this is like where he does some work and everything. And that's Alex's chair. And I guess that's the visitor's chair. And it's just great. Look at that uh, Jenny. 1916, I guess. 19-something Jenny. And this is the f up top above his workspace. And it's like a lot of this like that. Uh, that's an SE5. You know, Alex gets old airplanes. He'll fix the covering. And he redoes all the markings. And he makes them look weathered and everything. And it's just really, really intense. And he's working on this. Uh, World War II German aircraft and he'll get a little pilot in there and weather it and make it look cool and that's actually this Chevy is his workbench he's got this on the back where he does all of his modeling work and down the side of the Chevy there's an old TWA Con Connie and I even know it's some that looks like a PBY down the end ah it's so much man and look, just look at the rafters look at all the stuff it's like I this steerman he did all this that's not a decal you know, he paints all this stuff on these planes. Even the little dude in the parachute. Oh, I'm falling. He's got even this little parachute guy here of a, I don't know, what's that, a Mercury mission capsule coming back after orbiting the Earth? And this is what I can say. See that? It looks like, a, I don't know, some kind of Grumman South Pacific aircraft, all the streaks, machine gun uh, something streaks on it. He does all of that weathering. And like I say, the, if you look at the marking on the side, he did that all, I think, with one shot. So it's not just pinstriping and stuff, gang. It's like everything. And around the side here, Alex did the, that pinup girl, again, on like one of those backyard patio uh, tabletop things. And uh, for us motorcycle guys, this is another Harley. I think it's a 51 or a 52. And it's unrestored other than the, the cheap single-stage enamel paint job. I think he paid $100 for that back in the uh, 60s or something. A scale model rotary engine and battleships and stuff. It's just really, really intense in here. I just wanted to show you, you know, all of this stuff. And here's like that uh, P47. You know, again, he did all of these markings himself. He weathered it. You know, he's really into these model airplanes and stuff. But, you know, he loves his, his pinstriping. And all of, you know, just all of the art. It's just... Here's an old, like a Curtis Robin. I'll turn the camera sideways so it looks good on your TV at home. But he loves getting an aircraft piece like this and having it recovered. And he saves it, you know, from being, being demolished or crushed. And I'll try and move my camera. And he did the lettering on this. And I'm trying to zoom it in a little at a time. Now you can, you know, you do a pounce pattern or whatever to get the lettering. But look at the lettering on this. Isn't that great? You know, I wish I, you know, I wish for me I could do it as easily as, as he does it, but it's tough. It's hard. For me it is at least. So let me get this camera like this here and get myself back and just look at all of this. It's incredible. Uh, but, you know, if this just didn't happen overnight. Now, Alex is, I don't know, 70-something years old, and I've known Alex, I guess, 20-something years. And this is just a lifetime collection and love of art and aviation art and, you know, little G.I. Joes <laughs> with flight helmets. It's great stuff. I, I love, when I come back to Long Island to visit, I love coming here because it's just so inspiring. I want to go home and, and, you know, build an airplane in my yard. I'm trying to just keep moving around because just, I just love all this stuff. 
Now, I build model, there I am. I love model airplanes and I still build balsa wood planes. And, but Alex has got the knack to uh, really get this stuff cool. You know, building a model airplane is cool, but he makes it look real and it's cool. And it all comes from, you know, as a, as a younger guy, pinstriping and stuff. So uh, it's getting late in the day here. I got kind of botched, but I wanted to walk around and show you everything Alex does. He's got a car out front, and I'm going to have to get that car on film. It's an old Chevy station wagon, and he just loves his aviation, and he did art on that also. So uh, if my battery pack holds up for today, we'll go out and do it. But we're going to get back to Alex, and we're going we're gonna to show you how he pinstripes and gets stuff done. <laughs> all, right, all right, everybody. This is my friend Alex Delina. And his pinstriping uh, tag or trade name is Alex in Wonderland. Right. Um, and he's been pinstriping forever. <laughs> when, when did you start pinstriping, Alex? Uh, 1974. 1974. I was like 10 years old. I Go had figure. To remember. <laughs> you had to remember it so long ago? <laughs> well, the time here. So, what was it like when you started pinstriping? It was uh, completely different, I'll tell you that. Um, there was hardly anybody doing it. It was uh, a dawn of an era, I guess, you know. No cars around here. Now we're jam-packed full of cars. But uh, it's been a lot of fun, you know. It's a really lovely thing. Um, it's a lifestyle, for sure. We're very creative. You make yourself happy doing it. And make a lot of, pa a lot of other people happy with you, you know. It's love. <laughs> what can I tell you? It's the love of the it's art. It's love. Like I said, it's really, you know, pinstriping is one aspect of the overall art of what a lot of these guys do and everything. So what I want to do is I'll zoom in on Alex's box. Now, Alex doesn't really pinstripe anymore. He's kind of semi-retired. So we're not going to look at a whole lot of cans and stuff, but he still has his basics that he, you know, takes out once in a while. And he does a lot of nose art, obviously, at the local Cradle of Aviation Museum. Here Nassau on, County Museum. Nassau County Museum of Aviation here in Long Island. And Long Island, if anyone's into aircraft, knows that it's filthy with aviation. You had Republic, Grumman, Curtis, and you know stuff dating way back. But let's skip that and get right into pinstriping. I'll, I'll move the camera around. And we'll look at Alex's box and some of his brushes and stuff and move on from there. Let's start with the paint. We're going to start with paint. Give me one sec. I'll set that camera up. All right, Alex, what, are you, what have you got? In your, everybody has a cantilever box, I notice. But what have you got going on in your box? What kind of brushes do you use and paint and thinners and stuff? Well, a box is a very personal thing. And uh, from what I found out, a nice metal box is better. Because it doesn't, uh, what do you call it, destroy or self-destruct itself real quick. A wood box, they, they look good and everything like that, but these, this is what I like, a nice metal box. Anyhow, my whole thing in my life was one shot. I got used to it. I got comfortable with it. So Alex uses one shot, everybody. Old-fashioned. Here, here's... That's all there was back in the day. Yes. Now everybody's doing a lot of every different things. Okay. So the best way with one shot is one shot, if you leave the top off, it likes to skin up like right away. You know? That's what some guys have, hey, we're going to cover that question later. Everyone always asks about the skin, you know, if that's okay or what have you. Well, it, you know, the stuff is so expensive and, it, and, it, and the skin is real thick. You waste a lot of paint. And when it skins up, it gets real thick in the bottom. So then you got to keep on thinning it and everything like that. This is the best method, I, I think. Yeah, I see you've got these little... I'll show everybody. Yeah, the you screw. See the little screw he's got in there? You can tell he's been pouring it out. There's one over here. What, do you poke a hole in there with like an yeah, ice pick? Yeah, you, you drill a little hole. Here, here's, here's a little screw here. You guys just using what looks like a... Sheet metal yeah. screw. He's got a sheet metal screw there, gang. And you can see it in the in the lid of the can. Right. So he's poking a hole in there and using the sheet metal screw as a, uh, like a cap. Like on your log cabin syrup, you know? So... It's very costly for the, uh, for these colors. You want to get the maximum use out of them. You want to take care of them. So this is the best method to get the most paint out of your jar that you spend so much money on. So nice little screwdriver. When you first get the, the, the can of paint, you want to open it up and you want to stir it up real good. And then you want to put hex nuts in there drop them in there like you make a rattle can out like, of it. Like a spray can. Yeah, yeah. So 
Anyhow, I get uh, these little shot glasses here when I want to uh, have a color. I take, these are hard to come by. You get them at, um, what do you call it? Uh, a, a bar, barbecue supply place. Isn't this the same stuff that they give yeah. you a ketchup in at restaurants? Right, right, right. And you put your paint in these little guys, right? Right. Okay. Oil, linseed oil. Okay. There you go. Little bit. There you go. Little bit of linseed oil. And then stir it up really good. That might be an, uh, good enough for pinstriping right now. My favorite pinstripe brushes are usually the the round, round handle pinstripe brushes. Pinstriping brushes, it's called a dagger brush. It looks like a knife. And uh, it, it's like your best friend. So when you go shopping for pinstriping brushes, you gotta, it's trial and error. You gotta jump in and you gotta experiment. What is the best brush for you? Once you find out that you have a good brush that you kind of like, you just keep on practicing a lot. The big deal about pinstriping, and whatever you want to do, is practice, practice, practice. That's what's going to make you good. You got to put a lot of hours into it. How much do you really want to do this? You got to really dedicate yourself to this stuff. Anyhow, let's give it a try. Um, well, I want to look at these brushes you got here. Yeah, those are nice too. Those are round. Those are two different kind of brushes. You got, what kind of brushes you got here? You got um, three pinstriping brushes, and then you got like a, a script liner, which is a doodling brush, real tight turns. So with making these. like curly cues and. Yeah, it's uh, what is it called? Bo Bo Mac. Bo, how do you say that? It's a Bobo. Bobo? It's a Bobo yeah. brush made by Mac. Yeah, those and they're number ones. You can you can probably see them good if I hold it up close. You pause your DVD and, and read them. You got that, gang? All right. Okay. Yeah, it looks like I'll, I'll read them off to you. You got uh, you got a Bobo Mac One, you got a Super Quad, a Bobo Mac Zero, and you got Double Zero DC Flatliners, and a Seelig, S E E L I G. That's a Seelig striping brush up the top there. So these are all striping brushes here, and, and, and the, those uh, was the scrolling. Right. And yet they, that's not for like uh, going down the side of a car straight line. These brushes over here are not for side lines on a, on, a, on a long line of a car. They're for those curly whoopie These duties. These dagger brushes are for going down the side of a car, body lining. These are for scrolling, the one, two, three, four. And you got to make sure that your brush is well uh, cleaned. I use... Um, how, how do you clean your brushes? With um, clean up. Turp, uh, not turpentine, uh, lacquer thinner. Use lacquer thinner? I use lacquer thinner. Oh, you could use uh, turpentine, but I like lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner these days, uh, if some of the old lacquer thinner worked really good, and I've been getting some old lacquer thinner from some of my aviation friends that restore airplanes. That's There's, probably like virgin lacquer thinner, not that recycled stuff. You gotta have stuff. some strong stuff to clean. You you don't want your your paint brushes, your uh, pinstripe brushes starting to gather up paint down at the end of the, uh, what do you call it, where the, the metal start. Yeah, it, it, once that start happening, it, it just kills the action of the brush. So you gotta make sure that your brushes are always clean. If you go answer the telephone, you gotta come right back and you gotta clean that brush all the time. Once you finish pinstriping, or whatever you do with every kind of paint, I like to oil my brushes. Okay, I use uh, yeah. what do you call it? Uh, what is that called? It's Lexol. Le yeah, that's usually you know that. for like um, what do you call it? Uh, oiling a leather jacket or shoes or something. Or even like and a baseball mitt, maybe. It, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. It works really well, good. Um, so you dip it in when you when you. Stop pinstriping or, or painting. You dip it in, and you run it through with your fingers. And that keeps the bristles soft, so you can do another yeah, yeah, job. Yeah. This, uh, and you got to make sure when you lay it up, you don't you don't let it curl like this. It's got kind of like a girl setting her hair with rollers. That brush will stay like that. You can get the curl out of there, 
if you make a mistake, if you wash it with uh, what do you call it, shampoo, and then hang it up. So how do, how do you store your brushes? You, you like that little wire tray with the coil? Uh, everybody has their own method. I had a little. Uh, when I went to one of my friend's weddings, uh, he had a candy dish that he gave for like a favor. Everybody that was at the at and the you kept them in the candy and dish. And I kept it. I kept it, but uh, all of a sudden it took a walk. Now I gotta get a new candy dish. <laughs> Maybe I gotta go to a wedding and <laughs> find somebody to give me one. So if you're gonna get married, invite Alex and give, <laughs> yeah. and give him a new candy I, I dish. I need new. <laughs> yeah. What you gotta understand is um, loading the brush properly is a very important thing, and the action of the brush is kind of like almost like a shock absorber. You gotta get you got not a shock. I'm using the wrong term. Um, you got to get the paint where it's the consistency is just enough where it's tugging, it's not drying, and it's not too loose. It's gonna you, you feel be, a little bit of drag. You feel a drag. Yeah, you're waiting for that drag, you know. And once that drag, once it starts to drag, it straightens out the the hairs, and then you're ready to go. So um, you can feel as as the air hits this yellow, you can feel it getting more and more tacky all the time. The yellow is a little bit of a hard paint to use uh, uh, with the one shot. It doesn't cover as much as I would like it to do, but it's, it's still a good paint. Anyhow, I think we're done with how to load the brush. You want to go pinstripe something? Yeah, we're going to pinstripe that little uh, Chevy Celebrity over there. All right, guys, what we're going to be doing here, right in Alex's driveway, is he's got this, uh, well, on Long Island, we call them station cars. You're just driving from the house to the train station to go to work, or, or a winter beater, I guess, in, like, Minnesota. But it's just, you know, the average clunker. This is a 1987 Chevy, uh, I think, Celebrity, two-door sedan. And uh, some of you guys had asked that question about pulling the long lines down the side. And how do you start and stop those lines? And Alex is going to give us the complete rundown on how to prep the car to uh, pull lines, and we're going to just we're going to do the, the stripe down the whole side of the car. So uh, that's going to be a real treat because to me that's where the real money is pulling those lines on the side of a car to use car lot or, or a dealership or something. So we're going to uh, start off with that. Like I say, he's going to show you some of the ins and outs and, and uh, ins and outs and how he does it. Big Our thing with pinstriping cars is cleanliness on the car right you don't want to pinstripe and then a week later the customer comes back and said what the hell did you do it's all coming off so you got to have the surface very very clean all wax the guy hopefully he didn't wax it before he brought it over you got to ask him those questions did you wax my car that i'm going to do on you okay one of the right. big one of the what do you say one of the big things about pinstriping that you can get the wax off is tell the customer that he's coming over to wash his car with liquid dish soap. Plain old from the, from the uh, grocery store dish soap. So you wash the car really good. Nice wash rag. I'm going to go work the camera so we can follow Alex along with this. So pay attention to him. Okay. Go down the car. Another thing that you're going to need for pinstriping is a lot of paper towels. Paper towels are great if you got a dollar store around near you. You go through gazillions of these things. This is your best friend, paper towels. Okay, so I got down here, over here. And Alec, you, you, every time you do a car, you do this to it. Even if it's a oh, brand yeah. new car at a lot. Oh, yeah. Standard procedure. Make sure it's clean. And another precaution. So we got the uh, car a little clean with dish soap. But I'm also going to use grease and wax remover. What kind of what kind of wax and grease well, you got there? So many, so I just so happen to have this kicking around, but it could be all kinds of different. I I think they're more or less all the same. I got five star extreme. You know, somebody gave me this. So so you don't know where they bought it? No. Well, wax and grease you can remover, get them grease at and Ace wax. Hardware. You can get grease and wax remover. Ace Hardware. So anyhow, on paper towel, this stuff like it dissipates. 
evaporates really quick. Here we go. So, as time goes on and you become more and more of a seasoned pinstriper and your lines start getting more good, your lines will get good with a lot of practice. Once your lines start straightening out, then you can make money like at a dealership. Your car has to look professional when you do a dealership. Big tip on doing dealerships is scotch tape over here on, on your door jams. So right in the door jam, let me zoom in on that spot. Right. What do you got? You lay it down here. and you make sure there's no bubbles and it's not wrinkled and everything like that, you'll see after the job is done what I'm doing this for. The only guy that I knew, knew that could pinstripe a car freehand, long lines, incredible, he was a, magi ma uh, a magician. His name was um, Vic Kessler. Uh, and you did the video with Vic and Ed yeah, Roth. I did the video with Vic and Big Daddy Roth. The guy was a freaking magi magician. So, gang, he's so famous. <laughs> that this is the second pinstriping oriented video yeah, he's doing. Yeah. And anyway, Vic, I'll tell you about Vic Kessler and, and Ed, Ed Roth. You could probably find a VHS copy of that or somebody that's converted it to DVD on Limelight, like eBay someplace. But, uh, yeah, this guy, he, he gets around. You come down, you don't go up on top of the edge, you come down, you're accenting the, you're accenting the edge. So press it down tight on one end, and you run a nice long line, and then you tap it down there. Okay, here we go, down the side of the car. Okay. It's got a little bend over here. I'm going to have to smooth this over. With my thumb, press it down. Okay. Now there's a curve to the fender. Hold the long line, take it like this. Thumb. Then up like that. This, the mirror is a problem, <laughs> to say the least. Visual obstruction. There's two ways of pinstriping long lines. There's dragging the brush to you and then also pushing the brush away from you. You got to know how to do both. So right now I'm going to drag the line to me like this and then I'm going to switch sides and drag it the other way. So, so come around this right. way. Right. Yeah let me move around. Now, do you hold your breath when you stripe, Alex? No, I was just holding my breath there. Yeah? Because that's a vital point right there, that, uh, that mirror. You kind of get yourself wore out when you do this. You have to be kind of a contortionist, no? Yeah. See the door handle? Gets in the way of your hand, so you got to go the other way. Huh, okay. Yeah. 
Okay, you're going to go the other way. So you're going to pull that line right into the other line you made. Yeah, yeah. What's happening right now, it's fall right now. The sun is laying low. Right. So it's casting shadows. It's hard to see. I'm doing outside pinstriping, so I'm vulnerable to the outside light. You might get, like, a guy that wants to work in a garage or something like that. He's got artificial light. Light. Completely different story. you got to have good light inside, too. I think the best light is natural light. I never did like um, fluorescent lights. Although my friend Gary, the local brush, all he did was work on the fluorescent lights. What's good for one guy might not be good for another guy. You got to find your own way. As you notice, I, I keep on dabbing my brush, make sure that the paint is right. So here we go. Another thing with, with doing long lines is how you stand. Your body language? Right. You do a long lines, you want a nice long reach, and then you want to start shifting. It's kind of like almost like martial arts. Long reach this way, and then as you start shifting your weight, you, want, you, don't, want to, you don't want to stop a lot. You want to, if it's flowing, you want to just keep on going, you know? Get a nice, good stance. That's type practice also. Everything is practice, 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 practice. Scotch tape makes things look beautiful. See that? And that's how you get that, that, that right. nice, nice end. Right, it looks like it's tape. It's not. It's Scotch tape. You know, blob over there. Professional. That's professional. And see how nice the pinstripe looks on this car? Right. It really act. I mean, I... As long as I've been doing this, I'm still amazed of what a nice pinstripe looks good on. It makes the car look so much better. See this here line here? It's actually perfect for your pinky. You follow that line, that crease, with your pinky. It'll, it's a good stead rest, steady? Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you, when you stop a line like that, Alex, let me move on in. Okay. How do you, how do you pick up that line without it getting all like gloppy and goobered we'll looking? See. Yeah, put it right down. So you start a little yeah, further I, up the yeah, line? I, uh, I bring up the brush a little bit and then I start riding the rail.
we're gonna end this now. Okay, there it is, one side. How long did that take me? Not that long. Half hour? You gotta pull that scotch tape off still, okay, yeah? Okay, you got another thing to say about pinstriping. This is a beautiful thing to do. I mean, it's spiritually really great. The art of it is really, really great. If you're gonna do this and you wanna make money out of it, that's a whole different story story is you got to be a businessman you know what you artists who, artists are usually not businessmen exactly it's like uh oil and vinegar yeah <laughs> they want to separate all the time so i don't know i've never been a good businessman i've been a good friend to a lot of people i've had a great time it's my fault for being a business person i still do pinstriping and everything i still do love it some guys are good at the, at both ends. Very rarely, though. So did you be careful if you're going to do it commercially. Did you pull off that scotch tape? Oh yeah. On the back jam. Oh yeah. I just want to get a good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yep. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I love it. Now that. my mother's going to say, "How come you didn't do it the other side?" Yeah, right. <laughs> I remember watching Gary the local brush when I was like 15, 16 in a body shop do the scotch tape trick. I was like, oh, wow, that's oh, how yeah. they do oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is, that's great. But it, it, it makes a car, Spe especially the older cars, like I said. It makes a car. Your color combinations are perfect. Uh, and a whole other subject matter, too. What colors you use on what? All right, gang, that's like doing a, your typical straight pulls down the side of a car with Alex. I guess we're going to move on and do some whoop de doos and some Von Dutchy kind of stuff Basic, now. yeah. We're going to go to some uh, artistic stuff. Scrolling. Scrolling. I, mean, I got to kill my camera and set it up, move it around. So uh, let Alex clean up his brush and uh, get right. ready to do that. Right.